Welcome to this episode of Uplifting News Sleep Aid Daily, where we read you good news to fall asleep to. Today is Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. Our uplifting stories include School bus drivers read to students stuck at home. Polish priest puts up giant solar cross in climate fight and a taxi driver in Spain who took a stranded student over 900 miles free of charge to Italy. Now, breathe in. Breathe out. And relax as we dive into these stories. Our first article is from WDRB by Gil Corsi. West Clark School bus drivers now reading to students at home for distance learning. With no routes to run and no kids to pick up, one would think bus drivers would be out of a job. But one Southern Indiana school district came up with an interesting way for drivers to keep working while continuing to connect with students. They're going from drivers to readers. Jane Sirota is one of those bus drivers who suddenly found herself acting as a literary coach. It was a little bit scary, Sirota said. The bus driver for West Clark Community Schools reads to students Landon Manow and his sister for 20 minutes every other day. My kids are 25 and 17, so it's been a while since I read to someone in the second grade, Sirota said. Landon already has a favorite book. The doggy book, he said. Instead of driving kids to class, Sirota is bringing class to them via the internet. It gives me something to look forward to, Sirota said. He definitely brightens my day. With schools closed because of COVID-19, the West Clark Community School District Transportation Department sped into one-on-one reading lessons for most second graders in the Southern Indiana District. The drivers are assigned students from their bus. He looks forward to talking with her, said Anastasia Mano, Landon's mom. She does fun activities with him, not just reads to him. They did a scavenger hunt one day where him and his sister had to go out and find different things for the next day and show it to her. Mano, who works for JCPS, says Sirota has made the transition to social distancing easier. They want me to be mom, not the teacher, she said. So that would be, you know, the most challenging part. School officials said 55 drivers are reading to about 100 students. Those drivers have been told to check in using whatever method the family prefers. Driver Sarah Ho-Chen checks in with her assigned family over the phone. I ask them about their day and they tell me everything they're doing, Ho-Chen said. Because the family that I'm reading to, they only have one computer and they actually have four children in the house, two high schoolers and two second graders, so I think it's very challenging for them. It shows how school systems throughout the country had to find new ways to educate, especially given the fact that some households are equipped with digital technology and some aren't. Given the digital divide, districts are scrambling to figure out what can be done for students who don't have easy access to Wi-Fi or a digital device at home. West Clark Community School Superintendent Clement Perez Lloyd admits connectivity was a major issue that frustrated some families with the instant switch to e-learning. She said the district system was not initially equipped for 4,500 students in the district to log in at once. We become creative. We pull from different resources, Perez Lloyd said. You have to be prepared for plan B. In a way, These bus drivers play the same important role, connecting students from school to home. Our next article is from Reuters by Alicja Patak. Polish priest puts up giant solar cross in climate fight. By night, The 40-foot-tall cross on the Catholic Church in central Poland offers a neon light show of blue, red, or purple. By day, the cross produces the electricity to power the church's lighting, heating, and air conditioning. The cross, made of 18 solar Voltaic panels, is the brainchild of Krzysztof Guzielek, 
the ecologically-minded priest at Our Lady of Czestochowa Church. He said he arrived at the parish in the summer of 2018 and wondered how he was going to cope with such huge electricity bills. He decided he would install solar panels and had a flash of inspiration. They would be placed in the shape of a cross. To describe it in a somewhat playful way, for me as a man of God and a parish priest, I managed to get a two-in-one, a bit of economic gain and a bit of salvation for myself and other people, said Guzelik, 57, who footed the $7,888 bill out of his own pocket last fall. He said he was moved by an encyclical by Pope Francis five years ago, in which the Catholic leader called on his followers to work together to save the planet, saying, Mother Earth cries out to us because of the harm we have inflicted on her by our irresponsible use and abuse of the goods with which God has endowed her. The issue of climate change has put coal-reliant and staunchy Catholic Poland at odds with the European Union and the Vatican. In an interview with a Polish TV network late last year, the Archbishop of Krakow said that ecologism is a very dangerous phenomenon. Guzielek believes people must care for the planet. We don't have indefinite amounts of coal, he said. We don't have enough raw materials in the ground to last for many generations. We must use what God has given us, the wind, the sun. The priest has even inspired others to follow suit. Matilda Stepaniak, a 37-year-old doctor from a neighboring town who runs the church choir, decided to install panels on the roof of her private clinic soon after the church's cross went up. This idea, the photovoltaic crucifix, is a fabulous combination of economy, ecology, and faith, she said, and it looks fantastic, especially at night when it's lit. Guzelik, the priest, says he hopes it makes more people aware of what they can do for the environment. We all need to think that we do it not only for ourselves, but for future generations. Let's save the Earth. Let's save the world. This podcast is hosted on Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There's creation tools to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute the podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Our last article is from CNN Travel by Livia Borges. Taxi driver takes stranded student from Spain to Italy free of charge. An Italian student stranded in Spain due to the coronavirus crisis has been driven more than 1,500 kilometers or over 900 miles home free of charge by a taxi driver. Driver Kepa Amantegi, 22, drove Giada Colalto, also 22, from Bilbao, Spain to Montebello near Venice, Italy after a series of unfortunate events left her stuck. Colalto had been studying languages within the European Exchange Program, Erasmus in Bilbao, since February 1st, and had expected to attend university lectures until the end of June. When the coronavirus pandemic started, I decided to remain in Spain and see how things would go, Colalto told CNN on Monday. But when in mid-March her university closed and lectures and exams were moved online, she realized that staying in the Basque city no longer made sense, she said. I was alone. Also, my two Spanish flatmates had left. Colalto's struggle to find a way back home included hours on the internet and phone calls with the Italian embassy. She managed to purchase a plane ticket from Madrid to Paris, then to Rome and finally to Venice. But on April 8th, she found herself navigating more restrictions at the airport of the Spanish capital, Madrid, where a flight attendant informed her she wasn't permitted to board. I was desperate and angry. My parents were worried but couldn't do anything to help me. I called the embassy and they told me to send an email, 
All hotels in Madrid were closed and no public transportation to go back to Bilbao, she added. A friend of hers knew a taxi driver in Bilbao, Amantegui, and contacted him. He immediately said he was available to come pick me up, and he drove nine hours from Bilbao to Madrid and back, Colalto said. But once she was back in Bilbao, she learned her apartment was no longer available. Amantegui offered to host Colalto in his family home for the night. His parents and his two sisters welcomed me as a member of the family. I'll never forget their kindness, Colalto recalled. The morning after, she and Amantegui started working on a crazy idea to drive all the way back to Italy. We called the local authorities, and as incredible as it may seem, we got all the necessary authorizations. I was allowed since I was traveling back home, and he, as a taxi driver, was allowed because of his work. At 8 a.m. local time on April 10th, the pair left Bilbao, and after 12 hours they arrived in Montebello, Italy. At both borders, with France and Italy, there were police cars, but nobody checked them, Colalto said. I insisted on paying him, but he said, I don't want to take advantage of you. I see you're in a difficult situation. Don't worry about the cost, Colalto said, adding Amantegui only asked for a reimbursement of expenses for picking her up in Madrid. Once she was back in her family home in Montebello, there was a celebration. My parents cried tears of joy, Colalto recalled. Amantegui was invited to spend the night and returned to Spain the morning after with a basket of goodies from the region, wine, grappa, and lots of chocolate. It's something I will never forget. I was a complete stranger to this young man, she said, adding that in total, with all the trips he made, Amantegui drove more than 3,000 kilometers for her. This pandemic can show the best part of people, Colalto said. That's it for tonight. Whoever you are, and wherever you are, thank you for joining us at Uplifting News Sleep Aid Daily. Subscribe on Spotify and Apple Podcasts to get up-to-date episodes. Stay safe and stay inside.